In the math course that I teach, a student can be asked a question where they are given a coordinate plane with a polygon graphed upon it. They are also given the coordinates of the vertices. And they are asked, prove that this shape is a rhombus. Or they could be asked to prove many other different shapes. In my example, I am not giving numbers for the coordinates because I am not going to demonstrate how to fill in formulas or do the calculations. These are skills the student has to already have by the time they are getting this question. This example does not look like a rhombus, but I'm just using this graph as an example for each of these four shapes. To prove that a shape is a rhombus, all you have to prove is that it has four congruent sides. This is partly because of the way the question is asked. We already have the shape given, and we can see that it is a quadrilateral, and we can see that it is a closed polygon, so we don't have to prove those things. At this point, we just have to prove that to be a rhombus, it must have four congruent sides. And to do that, we are going to use the distance formula. The answer has to have the calculations of the distance formula correctly filled out. And the student has to say that they know a rhombus has four congruent sides. They have to say that they are using the distance formula. If they are asked instead to prove that it is a square, all squares are rhombuses, so the first step of the proof is to prove that the quadrilateral has four congruent sides, and we prove that with the distance formula in the same way. But in order to be a square, we also have to prove that the polygon has an internal 90 degree angle, and the way that we prove that is by using the slope formula. We also have to, once we have done the slope to a couple of the sides, to prove we have a 90 degree angle, we have to demonstrate that the slopes that we have are the negative reciprocal of each other. And we have to say that perpendicular lines have negative reciprocal slopes. So all of this information has to be in your answer, as well as the calculations. If we are asked to prove that we have a parallelogram, all we have to prove, given a quadrilateral, is that it has two pairs of parallel sides. And we do that by doing the slope formula. This time we do the slope formula four times. We also have to say that we know that parallel lines have the same slope. So we are proving that two of the sides have the same slope, therefore they are parallel. The other two sides also have the same slope as each other, and therefore they are parallel. At that point, we have proven we have a parallelogram. If we are asked to prove a rectangle, all rectangles are parallelograms, so the beginning of our proof is the same. We have to prove that we have two pairs of parallel sides using the slope formula, and we have to make it clear that we know parallel lines have the same slope. We also have to prove that we have an internal 90 degree angle, which means that we have to use the slope formula and the fact that perpendicular lines have negative reciprocal slopes. So we have to show that two of the slopes that we're using to demonstrate the 90 degree angle are the negative reciprocal of each other. There are other shapes that we have to be able to prove, but for this video, these are the facts and the steps that you have to follow in order to prove a rhombus, a square, a parallelogram, or a rectangle.